Here we have another question from the iStruct E structural behavior course. The question is, the support at B settles by 10 millimeters. What is the effect of this settlement in the bending moment at B? Give this problem a try for yourself and come back to it when you are done. So as this question wants us to know the effect of the settlement in the bending moment at B, we need to know what B is currently and what B will be afterwards. So let's find out the current situation. If you have a two-span beam in general, and each of these are the same length, and you have a UDL all over the top, the ratio, uh, the ratio of the reaction forces is actually 3, 10, 3. You can actually prove this for yourself using virtual work. Um, it's going to be quite a similar method to what we're doing uh, for, to solve this question, but that's just a freebie for you. And similarly, if you have a three-span beam with a UDL over the top, the ratio of the forces are 4, 11, 11, 4. Remember these for the rest of your life because this comes in very, very handy for this question, as you can see. Oh, only, only this one here. Don't worry about this one for this question, but for future use anyway. 3, 10, 3 is our ratio of forces. Okay, so let's find out our bending moment at the uh, at the middle support. So we're taking a free body cut right here, right now. And on the right hand side, we have a reaction. We've said it's the ratio 3103, so we've got 3 sixteenths of the total force coming down. So that's 10 kilonewtons per meter times 12 meters. So 3 sixteenths times 120 is 22.5 kilonewtons. Um, we may as well do the we may as well do that force at B, even though it's not going to come into the moment equation. So we've got 10 sixteenths times 120 which is equal to uh, 75, I think. 1, 2, 0, 0, divided by 16. 75 kilonewtons. That will be very important in a moment. And uh, we need the UDL at the top, which we've got, 10 kilonewtons per meter. So let's work out our moment at M. So let's sum the clockwise moments. So we've got 10 kilonewtons per meter times, and that's 6 meters, 6 squared over 2, and that's the end of our clockwise moments, so equal to m plus 22.5 kilonewtons times uh, 6 meters lever arm. So we'll take this part and take it away from the left hand side. So th 6 squared is 36 times 10 is 360 divided by 2 is 180 so 180 minus 22.5 times 6 45. So the moment at B is 45 kilonewton meters. Okay so let's just make a note of that. So it's currently at 45 kilonewton meters and that was uh, 75 kilonewtons okay now what happens when it settles well the uh, current situation is comprised of a virtual work equation which is something like this. So we had 12 meters 
we're imagining the middle support doesn't exist. We have some UDL coming down, which causes a deflection, but we sum up a central reaction, which causes a virtual deflection back up to its original position. So we get this dimension D is equal to this dimension D. And that's how, that's how we arrive at 75 kilonewton meters. Uh, sorry, 75 kilonewtons. So, if the support settles by 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, and let's call that new value x, that is actually equal to d minus 10 millimeters. So, what we can do is try to work out a new equation where we know the distance, which is x, but we don't know the force. Okay, and that's that'll be easy enough because we have we know the equation x is equal to P L cubed. Well, okay, F L cubed, L cubed over forty eight E I. So we know that. Uh, I, let's just check our units. E I is given to us in newton meters squared, one hundred ten times ten to the six. So let's put everything in newtons and meters then. So we have, uh, ooh, we need to know the value of D. Okay, well that's okay as well. So let's go back to here. So we had D is equal to, um, PL cubed over 48 EI, so 75 times 10 to the three times 12 cubed. Remember, we're, we're going over the span from A to C rather than any single span in between. Over 48 times 110 times 10 to the 6. So D there was equal to 75 times 10 to the 3 times 12 cubed divided by 48 divided by 110 to the power of 6. So D was equal to 0 0.02454545, etc. Meters. So 24.55 millimeters was the deflection. So we now need to equate X to be 14.55 millimeters or 0 0.01455 meters. Okay. So we know the values of 48, well, 48 we've, is 48. EI is 110 times 10 to the 6. L we know, so let's do that then. So we've got um, 0, 0 0.01455 times 48 times 10, 110 times 10 to the 6. That's 48 EI there. all over 12 cubed and that's our F okay so 0 0.01455 times 48 times 110 times 10 to the 6 divided by 12 cubed so F is equal to 44.46 kilonewtons right Good. So our new situation will look like this. Forty-four point four six kilonewtons in reaction. We did have we did have a hundred ten no hundred twelve kilonewtons coming down because that was ten kilonewtons per meter and that's twelve meters total length. So one hundred twenty minus forty four point six four six. 75.54, divide that by 2, so each of the outer reactions is 37.77 kilonewtons. Right, let's take another free body cut straight down the middle.
there'll be some unknown shear force, but uh, it's quite easy to work out, but it doesn't matter to us because uh, we are... Uh, yeah, <laughs> because it just... Uh, that travels through th through the point of the cuts, so that won't affect our moment equation. Okay, so um, we need to decide our di direction of moment. So I'm going to s I'm going to say that the moment will travel uh, clockwise, which I think yeah, that will be a sagging moment. Yes, it is a sagging moment. Okay, it doesn't matter which direction you put the arrow anyway. Like if it comes out negative, it just means it's pointing the other way. Mathematically, it comes to the same thing. Okay, so um, let's take a moment around this point then. So let's do the clockwise moments, which is 10 kilonewtons per meter times 6 squared over 2. So 10 times 6 is the force times 6 over 2, which is the lever arm. And that's, oh yeah, uh, plus m because that's also clockwise, is equal to 37.77 times 6 meters. So let's take this to the other side. M is equal to 37.77 times 6 minus 180. So M is equal to 46.62 kilonewton meters or 46.6 kilonewton meters. Okay, so the difference was we started off at 45 hogging, 45 kilonewton meters hogging. We've ended up with 46.6 kilonewton meters sagging. So the difference between that was uh, 91.6 kilonewton meters so of all the possible and that goes from hogging to sagging so of the possible answers well we've got 91.6 but it says 91.7 so that's close enough it adds 91.7 kilonewton meters in sagging and that is our final answer